Hello, friends, and welcome to KGW News at 5 o'clock. Our top story, people in 15 Oregon counties are preparing for another round of the state's tightest COVID restrictions. They begin tomorrow. Governor Brown made the order to move those counties back to extreme risk to try and stem the fourth wave now of the pandemic. As Pat Doris reports, many are criticizing the decision. Anytime businesses were restricted and normal life altered in the last 14 months to slow the pandemic, a lot of us complained. But often, without the vaccine, it did seem like the only answer. It's a great day. <laughs> Times are different now. 40% of Oregonians are either fully or partly vaccinated, yet Governor Kate Brown is still enacting the same sort of strict measures. It's brought an array of protests from political leaders, including Katherine Harrington from Washington County. We have vaccine. We have hospital capacity, so what's the problem? Her county is not moving into the extreme risk category, but she's frustrated as anyone at the governor's move. Please don't do our local businesses further harm by placing restrictions on the businesses. The extreme risk designation will hit businesses across Oregon. The governor's office and the health authorities say there's so much virus in the state right now that shutting down indoor dining and limiting other indoor activities is the best approach. Upwards of 60 percent of cases are, are sporadic, where, which, which means the answer is no idea where it came from. Uh, and, and, and that tends to be the case as we get into these peaks is that there's just more disease out there. And so environments where you take off your mask and sit close to other people like a restaurant become inherently more risky. In Central Oregon, Deschutes County Commissioner Patty Adair disagrees. Governor Brown, we have gotten our vaccines. Honestly, the vulnerable of Deschutes County, Central Oregon, have gotten their vaccines on a very, very high percentage. It's time to go forward. We do not need to go backwards again. Um, you know, you just feel like this will never end. I asked the governor's office why not allow restaurants to stay open but require vaccine proof for customers who want to dine indoors. The spokesman said there's a number of privacy, equity, and implementation questions around that idea and that action is needed right now. In Clackamas County, Commission Chair Tootie Smith said she's tried to convince the governor to allow local county health departments to decide how best to counter the virus, but she's gotten nowhere. Your metrics are nonsensical, Governor Brown. Please look at them differently. Please start to work with your local health authorities on recovery and reopening, and that includes science, innovation, and technology that's in use in America right now. Multnomah County Chair Deborah Kafori did not criticize the governor at all. She said she's worried both about hospital capacity and about the impact on businesses, and she wants the legislature and the governor to get emergency money to the businesses that are hurt fast. In Northeast Portland, Pat Doris, KGW News. Now let's take a look at the vaccination numbers. More than 1.2 million Oregonians are now fully vaccinated. That means they have either both doses of one of the vaccines or a single dose of the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. And that equals to be about 28% of Oregon's population. Washington, they report similar rates. About 2.2 million people there are fully vaccinated, and that makes about 29% of Washington's population. More than 3 million people have had at least one dose. And some Portland area businesses are offering vaccine incentives to employees and customers. And they're getting pretty creative when it comes to encouraging people to get the shot. At Vault 31 Bar in Vancouver, the owner is offering free jello shots to customers who prove they got their vaccination. And a Portland attorney is offering $100 cash to her employees. I think of something that would celebrate the fact that they are they were willing to take the shots and make it kind of fun. Well, that's fun. It's not just small businesses offering incentives either. Kroger, the company that owns Fred Meyer, is offering $100 for employees who get fully vaccinated. And at Krispy Kreme, yum, a free original glazed donut to customers who show their COVID vaccination card. Jello shots, donuts, 100 bucks. <laughs> what could be better? Washington State University has now announced all students and staff will be required to get the vaccine to be on campus this fall, and that includes the campus in Vancouver. People can get medical, personal or religious exemptions, but they need to provide proof. The vaccine requirement starts on August 6th, two weeks before fall classes begin. WSU is the state's first public university to make that call. In Oregon, the U of O and Oregon State don't require the vaccine yet. 
Oregon State said this week a future vaccine requirement is a possibility. The World Health Organization director says more than 1 billion coronavirus vaccine doses have now been administered globally, but 82% of those doses have been given to people in wealthy countries and less than half of a percent of the vaccines have been administered in low income countries. He said unequal access to vaccines will be one of the main obstacles in ending this pandemic. Now, you might remember Washington in particular was hit really hard by these fake unemployment claims right when the pandemic hit. Well, an investigation has now finally wrapped up and it's revealed that the state just was not prepared for the number of claims that they saw or the sophistication of some of these crooks. The pandemic overwhelmed the state's unemployment uh, employment security department, allowing scammers to file false claims. They topped over half a billion dollars and hundreds of thousands of people applied for unemployment last year, and some of them still have not seen a dime. Washington state lawmakers expressed their frustration with how the department is handling the problem. I just rechecked the promised web based front facing portal for answering common questions. And I have to say, it's still a joke. Lawmakers say they want the agency to do more to prevent future problems. They've also asked for plans to be detailed and in writing. Developing tonight, there's another leak at the Hanford nuclear site in Washington. Federal officials say a storage tank looks to be leaking radioactive chemical waste at about three and a half gallons a day. The government says there's no immediate risk to people nearby or people working at the site. Billions of dollars are being spent to clean up Hanford, but it is still the most contaminated radioactive waste site in the country. Tonight on NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt, the possible speed bump to your summer road trip. Gas stations running on empty. Experts say there's plenty of gas, but a shortage of drivers to deliver it. That means some stations could be out of fuel for several days, but the shortages should be hit or miss. So there's no need to panic by if you find one station that's out of fuel. Another down the block should have a supply tonight at 530 on NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt tips to save gas and avoid the shortages.